In this presentation, we will take a look at capital assets as they relate to governmental accounting. When we consider capital assets and compare and contrast the governmental accounting to for-profit accounting, you'll recall capital assets are going to be those types of assets that we will capitalize. We will put on the books as an asset rather than an expense, typically a long-term asset, property, plant, and equipment, often things that are going to be depreciable, depreciable assets. First, we're going to go through a list of capital assets for governmental accounting. Capital assets would include land. Note that land is going to be kind of that exception to depreciation. We don't typically depreciate land. And then we have the buildings. We have improvements. We have construction work in process. So if we're making something like a building or some type of improvement, then the work in process is going to be something that we will capitalize. And then we have vehicles. We have machinery equipment uh, historical treasures historical treasures being unique to governmental accounting not typically found in other words in for-profit type of accounting same with infrastructure assets so the infrastructure is something that we wouldn't typically find in a for-profit accounting in governmental accounting and then we have the intangible assets the capital assets are going to be the more expensive long-term assets assets that are going to last a long term into the future and therefore we're often going to need some type of financing option in order to pay for the capital assets often financed by issuing long-term debt so therefore when we think about types of big t ticket items capital asset type items or purchase or making something like infrastructure Therefore, when we think about capital assets and putting together things like infrastructure projects, things like buildings and bridges and roads and whatnot, we often have to think about the financing of those items and we might be combining the types of funds that would be involved, a capital project fund and possibly the debt service fund as well as the governmental type of activities. Then the question, of course, is how do we repay the debts that we might use to purchase the capital assets? We're, of course, going to have the tax revenues that could be used to pay for the capital assets. We may have some type of special assessment against property that benefits from the long-lived assets. In other words, we might be thinking about a capital project or something like that, and certain industries or certain taxes might be put in place to try to tie out the cost of the capital asset to the people that are most benefiting from the long-lived asset. We could have grants. We could have uh, other governments might help us to finance the capital projects. We might have a transfer from other funds in order to finance a capital project uh, oftentimes going to be the general fund or gifts could be other types of options that could be financed or used to finance capital assets capital projects accounting for general capital assets capital assets can be accounted for in the general fund or the special revenue funds these are both going to be governmental type of funds both governmental funds are going to be accounted for using the modified accrual basis you'll recall the general fund is going to be the main fund every type of fund accounting is going to have some type of general fund special revenue fund is going to have some type of restriction in terms of the revenue what the revenue is going to be used for within the special revenue fund because both of these are are governmental funds and therefore use modified accrual basis we're going to be recording the capital assets as expenditures we're not reporting them on the books in the general fund or special revenue fund as an asset because we're not going to be looking at the long-term assets in these types of governmental funds as we will in the government-wide activity then we have the capital projects fund and if we're putting together some type of large construction process building say a building or a bridge or something like that or major capital expenditures we may account for that in the capital projects fund the capital projects fund also a governmental type fund and therefore on a modified accrual basis and we would then use the capital projects fund to track the expenditures related to any capital project so you can think about if we were to build a building or something like that we would be tracking the flow the activity within the capital projects fund it then using a modified accrual basis also not recording the building or the capital assets as assets because we're not recording the long-term capital assets we're recording the flow the activity of what's happening within the capital projects fund and then the government-wide governmental activity and this is where we can think of the entity as a whole the governmental entity as a whole we're going to be accounted here on a method that we're more familiar with the accrual method and therefore this is the area where we will record the capital asset as an asset and if it's depreciable record the depreciation in terms of the accumulated depreciation and depreciation expense on the government-wide level also note when we're thinking about the general fund and the special revenue funds 
we may account for capital expenditures with the use of appropriations. So we may have budgetary accounts to set up the appropriations, which may include expenditures related to uh, capital asset expenditures that we would then expend throughout the time period. So we would come up with the appropriations, the budgetary accounts at the beginning of the time period, post those, and then record the related encumbrances, encumbrances and then expenditures when we purchase the uh, capital assets. Accounting for general capital assets, they're going to be recorded at historical cost, estimated cost, or fair value. When we're thinking about recording the capital assets in the governmental funds, the governmental funds, the special revenue funds, the capital projects fund, the general fund, if we're recording into the funds, then we're going to record these as expenditures. They're going to be expenditures within the fund. Remember, that's similar to an expense. That's going to be the flow type of activity. This is going to be the modified accrual method. This is going to be different than what we would expect because we would expect under normal accrual basis to record them as a capital assets. They're going to be capitalized in the normal way or more of a normal process, what we would expect for a long-term asset in the governmental activity. So when we think about the governmental activities, governmental as a whole, we'll do more of what we would expect, put them on the books as the capital asset, and then record any depreciation related to them in the governmental activity. So any depreciation related to the capital assets, the recording of depreciation, and the decrease of the book value of the capital assets, which we would normally think of in terms of accrual accounting, something that we will do on the governmental activity level, uh, the government-wide activity level. When we think about the uh, funds, however, they're on the modified accrual basis, and therefore we don't have those long-term assets. And that's going to be one of the major things we want to keep in mind when we consider these capital assets. The funds, modified accrual, don't typically have long-term assets, only have the short-term assets. Therefore, we won't see typically capital assets on there and we're going to account for the expenditures related to them if they're applicable to that particular fund with expenditures when we think about the government-wide type of accounting we get to think of the accrual method and we'll see more of what we would expect on that level